Speed in Jesus' name. Raise up your voice to the Lord and tell the Lord, I have it. I have it. I'm going to succeed. The power of God will be in your life. The authority, the anointing will be on your life. And you will not fail. This new year, success and victory, you'll be more than a conqueror. There are giants in the land and you're one of them. Tell the Lord, I will not fail. My family will not fail. My husband will not fail. My wife will not fail. My children will not fail. Our local church will not fail. Whatever happens and whatever is happening and whatever will happen, the Lord has given us a victory. Victory is yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we come to bless your name. We come to celebrate. Our Lord Jesus Christ is King of Kings, is Lord of Lords. And Lord, we pray all that you have promised your people this year, you will do for every one of us in Jesus' name. Your people will not be ashamed. Your people have been under confounded. We pray, Lord, that possibilities and great potentials you pour upon every life in Jesus' name. I pray that where we failed before this new year, we're going to succeed. Where we were kind of driven to the world and they put our back on the wall or put our back on the floor, I pray that the people of God will rise up like a mighty army. And we are going to be victorious in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray where there is discouragement, bring courage. When there is despair or depression, oh Lord, I pray I'll bring life into everyone in Jesus' name. Your hands will not be weak. Your knees will not be weak. Your family will not be weak. Your ministry will not be weak. You will go from strength to strength, from grace to grace, from glory to glory, from power to another level of power in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, what we are looking at today, in this very time, I pray, Lord, you make us doers of the word. And when we do and practice what you have given us, Lord, we pray, our power will know no limit. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. You can sit down. I'm reading from James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 22. James chapter 1, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. I'm talking about something this morning that relates with everyone, relates to everyone. You know, there are some messages we hear that we say, praise the Lord, there's nothing for me to do about that. They're talking about salvation. They're talking about believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. We say, thank God I've done that. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm born again. I'm saved. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And there's nothing new for you to do about that. Sometimes we're talking about sanctification. And the preacher lays it line upon line, precept upon precept. We say, praise the Lord. I am sanctified. And I can tell you the time and the date and the time it happens. Although I am growing in it. But Praise the Lord, it has happened. You know, sit there for you don't have to do anything new about that. And then you're baptized in the Holy Ghost. And the preacher comes and he says, Ye must be baptized in the Holy Ghost, he shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto you. Say, Praise the Lord, I have. have got that. And sometimes we come in here and we come to talk about marriage and we're saying now we're talking about how to know the will of God in marriage. And then you relax and although you open your nose and you try to write some things out just for not let's say because you are married already, you knew the will of God already and everything is done and sealed already. Therefore you say I don't need that for my personal self. But there are some messages we preach that you cannot just toss aside and say, well, I don't need to do anything about that. What we're talking about this morning is something that relates to everybody. It is not like I have done that. I don't have anything to do about that anymore. Extraordinary possibilities through really. fasting and praying church. Extraordinary possibilities. There's something ahead of you. Great possibilities ahead of you. But you are going to have to give time sometimes for fasting and praying. Because here it says, be doers of the word. This morning, what we are talking about is not just I'm, I'm hearing that, I'm seeing that, I'm learning that, I'm writing my notes. This one, you will do something about this. 
I said you will do something about it. And be not hearers of the word alone, deceiving your own selves. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 17, reading there from verse 19. Matthew chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 19. I want to tell you that I'm sure you know this, that 17 is much, much after 10. In chapter 10, Jesus Christ had sent them out. In chapter 10, he had given them authority and power. In chapter 10, they went out two and two by two, and they cast out devils and they healed the sick and they preached the gospel. And many people came to know the Lord, but here comes chapter 17. A greater problem arose. A greater challenge arose. A greater difficulty arose. A greater call for power in ministry arose. And they could not cast out the devil. And when the Jesus Christ confronted that problem very easily, he cast out the devil. And then, look at verse 19, then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? Already we have some power. Why couldn't we cast him out? We are born again. Why couldn't we cast him out? And you told uh, Peter, the previous chapter, you said that uh, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. That means we have some revelation. Why is it we cannot cast him out? We are forsaking all and we are following you. Why is it we couldn't cast him out? And then Jesus said, all those things you have got very good. All those things you have done very good. All those things you possess, very good. But there's still something you need to possess. And can I tell you, all the testimonies we give, wonderful. And all the experiences we have, wonderful. But the Lord is telling us something this morning. Look at it in verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hands to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Uh, can you. Can you think of a person that nothing is impossible for him? And can you tell yourself that I can get to the point in the Christian life, in the Christian faith, in the Christian ministry, where nothing is impossible for me? I can get to such a level of ministration where nothing shall be impossible for me. It is just like a little child. It's just starting school. It's, say, it's starting with primary one or maybe kindergarten and then that child has something within him. He has heard of professors. He has heard of engineers. He has heard of doctors. He has heard of builders. He has heard of, you know, different different kind of professionals. And then that little child is saying whatever it will take, I'm going to give it. I'm going to become a doctor. I'm going to become an engineer. Now, at this present time now, the child does not have anything that qualifies him to be. But he has the desire. He has the plan. And he has the determination and the diligence. And he's saying, whatever it's going to take, I'm going to be like that. Here you are as a Christian. Maybe you are at the primary school level. You are born again. Maybe you are in class two. You are sanctified. Maybe you are in class three. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. Maybe you've gone to class four. You are doing some little evangelism. But then you have not got to the point of the people we call a no-limit preacher, a no-limit person, a person that has no limitation at all, that everything, whatever it is, is possible with him, that he gets to this point that nothing shall be impossible unto you. And then you say, that's far ahead. Just like being a professor is far too far ahead of that primary school child. But the child says, I'm going to keep on working at it. A day at a time, a week at a time, a month at a time, a semester at a time, a year at a time, a session at a time. I'm going to keep on working at it. And eventually, the one that you saw some years ago, and that child was just maybe your class, if you're a primary school teacher, that child now is on his way to becoming a professor because the child will not give up. What if you t tell yourself today and say, there is a particular place in ministry that nothing shall be impossible unto me. And Jesus said in verse 21 now, for you to get there, he says, how be it? This kind goes not forth, but by, tell me, prayer and uh, fasting tells us then that there's something we need to do. That this extraordinary possibility Extraordinary potential, extraordinary ministry is possible by prayer and fasting. It will be possible for you. I said it will be possible for you. I'm looking at Mark chapter 2, verse 18. Mark chapter 2. 
I was looking at verse 18. Mark chapter 2, verse 18. Here, here is what it says. And the disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast. And they come and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and disciples of the Pharisees fast? But the disciples fast not. But let me, before we go on, let me explain something to you. Now, just fasting, fasting, fasting does not solve the problem. Now, you know, John the Baptist himself, he wasn't a miracle worker. John the Baptist just preached repentance, and he preached holiness, he preached righteousness. He even preached the baptism in the Holy Ghost, but he, he did not have it because he was saying that there's somebody coming who will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He preached that you should have a credible life, a righteous life, that you, you should not exact from other people what is uh, more, more than necessary. He preached very good thing. If people preach about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and just a foreigner, he is coming, but he never worked any miracle. And the disciples of John could not see him performing miracle. Although they fasted, they didn't have the power. So it's not just that I'm fasting. Who are you following? Whose example are you following? Who do you have as a mentor, as a model, as a master? That that mentor is not just John the Baptist or the limitation of John the Baptist. Because if you are following John the Baptist, and you cannot be greater than your master. You cannot be higher than your master. You cannot have more power and more credibility and more influence that your master, if that's the person you are following, you can fast and fast and fast, and you never go beyond that master. But then you have a master, you have a mentor, you have a model, and that model is the Lord Jesus Christ, and you saw him casting out devils, and you saw him healing the sick, and you saw him raising the dead, and then when it came to their turn, they couldn't do it. And they said, why couldn't we do it? And he said, you need something. If you have walked my life, don't you see that before I started this 40 days waiting upon the Lord without eating, without drinking. I'm not saying you should do that. I'm saying that's what Jesus did. And what Jesus told them, he said, you too, you have something to do. Now the Pharisees came and the disciples of the Pharisees, you know, fasting, you have to understand fasting quite very well, deeply before you can do it effectively. The Pharisees, they fasted, but they fasted with their tradition. They fasted, but they fasted with their hatred. The hatred they had against Jesus Christ. They fasted, but they fasted with the misinterpretation of Scripture. You see, although fasting is good, the tradition destroyed the fasting. And all their hatred, everything destroyed the fasting. All the other things they were doing, they had added to the Word of God, which should not be the Word of God. All those things destroyed the effectiveness of their fasting. And you know the one that said, I fast twice in the world week, I give tithes of all I have, and he would say, went back to his house, condemned, because his pride destroyed his fasting. But here now we are told in verse 19, it says, Jesus said unto them, and the children of the bridegroom uh, fast, while the bridegroom is chill with them, what Jesus was saying is that, I am the bridegroom. And the bridegroom is chill with them, the children of the bride. And then it says over here, as long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. As long as they have Jesus physically with them, how will they fast? He is healing the sick. If they are he is sick, he will heal them. He is raising the dead. If they die before their time, he will raise them up. He is helping them and training them, equipping them. And whatever they needed, it was right there. But then he tells us in verse 20, but the day will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them then shall they fast in those days that tells us then now that jesus christ has gone to heaven and has given us this great ministry wonderful ministry that ought well to be effective in it it says now the bridegroom has gone to heaven and because the bridegroom has gone to heaven all that we need you'll not just have everything by saying in jesus name there's fasting there's praying and when you deny yourself like that jesus said Said, they shall fast in those days, and the stubborn demons that have not gone out. Well, you, it might you might just start in a little way. You know, you cannot. Maybe you've not been fasting before, and then you say, "Well, I'm going to fast now." And then, if you give yourself a kind of a level that you cannot attain, I will say, "For the next seven days, I'm not going to take anything." And you've not, you've never eaten, you've never fasted before. You all the time you know, you've been feasting instead of fasting. And all of a sudden, you hear a message like did this morning. Say, okay, Pastor, I am ready. <laughs> you are not ready yet. I said, You are not ready yet. And then you say, For one whole month, food, bye bye. 
Then after when you start in the morning, at 9 o'clock, 9 a.m., you say, that's my stomach. But you say 30 days now, and then by 12 o'clock, you say, Lord, I will start tomorrow. Then you break that one, and then tomorrow, next 30 days, why do you set yourself an impossible goal? Why don't you just say, just one day, just one day. I'm going to wait upon the Lord. And if I can make it today, oh Lord, days will be wonderful. And during that day, you make sure you clear your mind, and you clear your table, and you clear your life. Nothing like the Pharisees who are at the effectiveness of days passing. And then you're able to do it for just one day. And you have just one thing. Prayer request, you are praying. And you're saying, oh Lord, this is what I want. And then even after the fasting of that day, you're still reminding the Lord. The second day, even when you are not fasting, Lord, I fasted yesterday, and this is what I was asking. According to your promise, I know you will not fail. You said, ask, it shall be given unto you. And seek, and you shall find. And knock, and shall be opened to everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened unto him. You told me, which of you, being a father, if, if, if the child will ask for bread, will he give him a stone? If he asks for egg, will he give him a scorpion? You said, how much more will you then give good things unto those that ask you? And I've obeyed your word. I've waited upon you. Lord, this is what I'm asking. Your prayer is going to be answered. I said your prayer will be answered. But you know, we start little by little by little. If you're able to do it for one day, maybe another week again, just one day. Another week again, just one day. And later I'll say, maybe I can do two days and break it every evening. Maybe I can do three days and break it every evening. And little by little, you get into this. You will not know when that power begins to operate in your life. I said you're not when that path begins to preach your life. Because I know that you're on the path, you're on the right path. You're going to get there. That power is going to manifest in your life and through your life in Jesus' name. Three points we're going to look at. Number one, supernatural power through scriptural fasting with prayer. Supernatural power through scriptural fasting with prayer. That tells us then there is scriptural fasting. That the kind of fasting you're having is scriptural. And because it is scriptural, it's going to have supernatural power. We're looking at Exodus chapter 34. Exodus chapter 34. And I'm reading there from verse 28. Exodus chapter 34. We're looking at verse 38. It was uh, verse 30, 24, 38 Exodus. Here we, here we are. It says in verse 38, chapter. 34 verse 28 rather. In verse 28 it says, And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did eat, he did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Here we learn about Moses for 40 days. He was there, but understand, the body cannot deal without water so many days ordinarily. But this was special for Moses. It was unique for Moses because the Lord called him to the mountain. You know, when you are with the Lord, directly with the Lord, even if you are not breathing, you still live. Even if you are not eating, you still live. Even if you are not drinking, you still live. And so, we're not saying that, uh, you know, the ordinary person will just uh, go like that without water and without food for 40 days. But the point is this, that Moses fasted, and when he fasted, he fasted in a way that God approved. And because was a God chose him first, a God approved first, a God appointed first, then it worked for him. Even if you do yours for one day or two days or three days, it is God appointed and God chose him, and it is going to be effective in Jesus' name. In fact, you know, there are people you might not be able to deal without food for a whole day. If you have never been doing it before, maybe you want to just start and say, till 12 o'clock I will not eat, and then you lock up yourself in your house, read the word of God, call the promises of God, and then you are presenting a request, maybe a request about you, about your church, about your family, about a friend, about somebody in need. Even if it's till 12 o'clock, the Lord will honor that, because he knows you are just starting. Whatever little thing we do, the Lord honors it. And maybe another time, I'll take it to 3 o'clock in the afternoon, maybe another time, to 6 o'clock in the evening, and we're not saying that she will be able to take it to 6 o'clock. If you're so weak, if you're not used to it, and you start in a small way, we'll call it a baby step, a little step, a little step, a little step, and then even when you try, and then you fail, and you're not able to carry through, the Lord still recognizes the fact that you made an attempt. It's like a little child that starts crawling and starts walking, stands up, and then takes a step and falls down. Does the parent condemn the child? 
Oh, the, the mother, the father will stretch the arms and carry and say, Well done, you have tried. And then the mother will smile and the child will, and the star will try again and try again and try again until the child is able to not do it very well and do it perfectly. And so, if you start fasting and you start uh, this process and then you are not able to make it, don't condemn yourself. Just say, I'm just learning, I'm just a little baby, I've never done this before. And now that I'm doing it, the Lord will perfect it in your life in Jesus' name. I told you about Moses, see the result in the life of Moses. Deuteronomy chapter 34. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 10. It says, there and there arose not a prophet since in Israel, like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. You see that? Because of the power of passing the life of this a great man of God, it says, there's nobody like him in the land of Israel. You know, you can distinguish yourself. And you can, you can become such an exalted minister of God that there is no limit to your life, not because you are kind of destroy yourself, you should not fast until your health is affected, but you can fast until the power of God is manifesting in your life. It says in verse 11, in all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land, and in all that mighty hand and in all the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel. Can you see uh, there's a, a kind of international thing there. In Egypt he showed all the signs necessary. In Israel a different nation he showed all the signs necessary. When Israel was still in the land of Egypt all the signs necessary. As they were going in the wilderness outside Egypt he showed all the signs necessary because of the power of praying and fasting in the land life of that man. I pray that will happen to you in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles chapter 9. Acts of the Apostles chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 8. Acts of the Apostles chapter 9. Reading from verse 8. Do you remember this uh, man, Saul of Tarsus? He met the Lord Jesus Christ on the way. As he met the Lord Jesus Christ on the way, the Lord told him, it's a terrible thing for you. It's a hard thing for you to kick against the priests. Why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? I'm Jesus, who you're persecuting. What shall I do? Arise and uh, go. Into the city shall be told thee what thou shalt do. He arose. And then when he got to the city, Damascus, what was he doing? was praying and fasting. He will not eat. He will not eat. He said, now this one that I've seen, I'm going to make something out of it. Look at it from verse 8 now. And Saul, that's Acts chapter 9 verse 8, and Saul arose from the earth. And when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but he led him by, but they led him by the hand and brought him unto, um, in, unto them, into Damascus. Then it says, And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. Three days. A new convert. A new convert. He just met the Lord now. And in three days and three nights, no food and no water. And the Lord honored that. And you see the power of the Lord in the life of that man. And even after, even after, he still continued. Even after he became a Christian, became an apostle, became a preacher, became a missionary. That, uh, that uh, fasting uh, thing did not leave his uh, life. Look at Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 27. Second Corinthians chapter 11. We're looking at verse 27. In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. You see the testimony of Paul the Apostle, he said, in hunger and thirst. And then later he said, in fastings. What's the difference? In hunger and thirst, he wasn't fasting, but there was no food to eat. He wasn't uh, wanting to go without water, but there was nothing, nothing to drink. That means he suffered so much. And even though he was uh, deprived of food and water sometimes when he was in the prison or when he came into some strange lands in a hunger and, and thirst, and yet he still chose to fast. He still chose to fast. That's why he said, in fastings often, fastings often, he fasted. That's why the power of God was manifested in the life of that man. Look at chapter 12, verse 12. Chapter 12, verse 12, it says, Truly, the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. That's okay about himself because of that life of fasting often. I pray that God will open your eyes to see the great potential possibilities that the Lord lays before you, before me, before us, in praying and fasting in Jesus' name. 
why we say that? I've told you already that that scriptural fasting, why don't you look at another kind of fasting? I call it superficial fasting and prayer. Superficial fasting and prayer. Point number two now, sorrowful plight. The sorrowful plight after superficial fasting and praying. Superficial fasting and praying. I want you to come to Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. We're reading from verse 1. Here were people who fasted. And this fasting was so superficial, it didn't have any effect at all. Look at it in verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgression and the house of Judah their sins. It says in verse 2, yet they seek me daily. And they delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. It says, they ask of me the ordinances of justice. And then it says, and they take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not. Wherefore have we fasted, they were saying, and thou seest not. I was seeking you, want to know your ordinances, want to know your mind, want to know your will. And we are fasting and you are not hearing. Wherefore, have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, ye you find pleasure, and exert all your labors. He said, your fasting is fleshly, and because of the works of the flesh, and you, you, you are sensual. And because of the sensuality, you are trying to find pleasure where you should not have pleasure. And yet you say you are fasting. And that fleshly art, and that fleshly activity, and that pleasure seeking, it destroys your fasting. Then it says in verse 2, Behold, ye fast for strife and debate. He said that's why your fasting is not acceptable. You fast and you gossip. You fast and you are bearing tales. You fast and you're debating. You fast and you argue against the word of God. You fast and you're not accept the totality of my word. He said, that's why. He then, then said, you, fa you fast and you strive. You are in conflict. And there is this uh, bitterness in the heart, like the Pharisees. And there is this uh, kind of hatred against your fellow brother, your fellow sister, against your neighbors. He said, yes, I know you fast, but there is strife. You see, when there is a fasting with flesh, and fasting with a kind of animosity, and fasting with strife, and fasting with tail-bearing, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. When there is fasting and there is idol worship, you make yourself an idol. When there is fasting and there is negligence, when there is fasting, there is greed. Maybe you didn't notice what I've done there is to spell the fasting in another way. F for flesh. A for animosity. S for strife. And T for tail bearing. You are not taming your tongue. I for idolatry. That you used to make yourself an idol. You are so proud, you are so pompous, and you are so much exalted above the other people. I am fasting two, two times in the week. I am not like this man. Uh -huh. He makes himself an idol. And then end for negligence. You neglect the word of God. He says, this is what to do to your neighbor. You are not doing that. This is what to do. You are not doing And then G for greed. We are so greedy. And then we say we are fasting and fasting and fasting. If the fasting goes along with all those negative things, the fasting becomes superficial, superficial, and the Lord does not answer. Look at it in verse 4 again. Wherefore have we fasted and ye have, and, and thou seest not, and wherefore have we afflicted our souls? And then it says, And thou takest no knowledge. Behold, in the day of your fasting, my pleasure, and ye exert all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the feast of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. If you want your voice to be heard on high, you're not fast like that. You take all the fighting away, you take all the animosity away, you take all the strife away, you take all the gossiping and all the all the tail bearing. You take all that away. You take all the indulgence, the indulgence of your flesh. You take all that away. And all the negligence, you take that away. And the greed and the gossip, you take everything away. Then the Lord will answer. He will answer your prayer in Jesus' name. I'm looking at him. I'm looking at him. This is Proverbs now, chapter 28, verse 9. Proverbs chapter 28. We're looking at verse 9. Praying and fasting. But 
Fasting can become superficial. Fasting can become superficial. Some years ago, a man came to see me, not a member of our church, but came from another ministry. He, had, he told me he had fasted for 40 days, and then he wanted to cast out devils. He wanted to heal the sick. He wanted to, you know, have signs and wonders in his ministry, a minister of God. And he said, but after the fasting, he is uh, having some real challenges, affliction, and he's having some demonic operations in his life, and he things he didn't even see before those things were there and the wife was there when he was telling me that story and all the lord opened the lord helped me to see into that kind of fasting and i said uh, you really meant your fast for 40 days he said yes i'm telling the truth and i asked the wife is it true that your husband uh, you know waited on the lord for these 40 days and uh, you know and everything was she didn't, he didn't eat of course he drank water maybe even drank some fruit juice but no food for 40 days and the wife said yes and then uh, i said how can a person fast for 40 days wanting to do good and wanting to cast out devils and heal the sick wanting to become greater in ministry and this kind of thing will be happening to him then i just said i looked at him and i said before the fasting were you in agreement with your wife was there strife in the home were you fighting with your wife? Was there something that you were trying to hammer on with your wife? And your wife was saying, but my husband, look at it, look at it, look at it. And then that disagreement continued, and you still fasted. He said, no. I said, tell me the truth. The wife said, Pastor, he won't tell you, I will tell you. And the wife said, actually, we are fighting. And I told him, what was going on that 40 day fast and i said this fast will not be effective because let's say to come on here let us say to i'm willing to apologize to you i'm willing to repent my husband this one that we're doing this is not a minister's marriage this is not minister's family the way you are acting to me the way i'm acting let us settle this before you go so get away you women you want to hinder my uh, my spiritual life i've made up my mind i'm going to serve the lord whether you go to heaven or hell that's your business i'm going to serve the lord pastor that's what he told me and then i said okay i didn't fast with him i was eating my food because i knew that if i fasted in that mind god will not hear my voice and i said uh, minister how is it he said that is the truth that is the truth and i said you see now before we fast before we go on this even if it's one day fast or three days fasting before we go on that fast let us say let's have let's have a good relationship husband and wife parents and children pastor and members of the church you know if we're scattering and we're arguing and we're the same will show him i'll show him i'm the pastor he will show me that although he's a member that people too who are small they know how to cause trouble for great people if we're fighting like that and then we go on fasting that's superficial it will not work i pray that we'll settle all those things and our fasting will be effective in jesus name proverbs chapter 28 verse 9 proverbs 28 verse 9 he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law even his prayer shall be abomination you see that he that turneth away his ear from hearing the word of god and he will not put things straight and you know that love is very central in the word of the lord it says us must love your wives even as Christ also love the church and he gave himself for that for the church and if you don't have that law for your wife you don't have love, that law for your husband and then you go marathon fasting it will not work i pray that the love of god will be in our families in jesus name and then with each other minister to minister and minister to the members of the church and members of the church to the ministers that we just know what is it we're arguing about what is it we don't love one another for of course we ought to love each other and if that love is there and obedience to the word of god is there then you go on you're fasting i'm telling you you'll be the powerhouse of the almighty in jesus name we're looking at psalm 66 psalm 66 i'm reading from verse 18 psalm 66 we're looking at verse 18 look at this in verse 18 this is what it says in verse 18 if i regard iniquity in my heart what's the rest the lord will not hear me if I think that, you know, fasting will solve all my problems, all I need to do is just to fast. And my wife is saying, uh, honey, can I talk to you about, 
leave me alone. I'm fasting. I'm waiting upon the Lord. I'm a great, great minister. And because I'm a great minister of God, I don't want anybody to disturb me. And then somebody wants my attention, Pastor. I wanted to see you the other time and the way you. It even appears you didn't know me at all. I said, oh, pray, get away from my sight. Don't disturb me now. I'm fasting. <laughs> that kind of fasting. What kind of fasting is that? I think it's better to go off that person and go and eat and then sit and say, My sister, what are you saying? My brother, what are you saying? I'm sorry about that. And then the smile on your face, smile on her face. When everything is settled, then you want to fast, go ahead and go and fast. And God will answer your prayer. You'll be a dynamite in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. And then all these uh, tribalistic things that, you know, flying about, you know, it's not from my place, I'm not from his place, and then we don't see eye to eye. When all that is gone, and then we fast. I'm telling you, let's say, for example, now that we even want to fast for a whole year. We say, as Deeper Life Bible Church, we're going to fast for a whole year. And with how many churches do we have? The record is that we have more than 10,000 local churches in Nigeria alone. And then we say now, there's a church, about uh, maybe 300 members, maybe 500 members. This church, you are fasting on the 1st of January. This church, you are fasting 2nd of January. This church, 3rd of January. And then we go through 31 churches, uh, all January is covered, February and then March. And at 365 days, there's a particular church with about 500 members or 100 members, and they are really fast. No hatred. We all agree together. We are bombarding heaven. We send a prayer request everywhere. We say any Anybody that is sick in any deeper life, local church, they are praying that person must be healed. Any moment of the day, there's somebody praying. Any moment of the day, there's somebody bombarding heaven. I'm telling you, all of us who are, even if we don't think about our members, I will say we're going to fast and pray and bombard heaven with our request. I'm telling you that this church will become irresistible in Jesus' name. Anybody that has any problem, they say take him to deep palace. Because when, when they are there, there's somebody fasting. There are a group of people fasting every day of the year. And if we can try that, in, well, you can try that in your state. In, in some of the states, we have thousands and thousands of members. And we just divide ourselves and say, you are the 1st of January, you are the 2nd of January, you are the 3rd of January. And then we check and they are praying. And they are, they are real intercessors. And as we are praying like that, miracles will be happening. I said miracles will be happening. Now, the miracle will not be limited to the retreat or limited to the crusade time every day. Anybody that has any problem, all they have to do is come to the, the local church there. The moment they hit that local church like this, miracle will happen to them. And so, there's things we can do. And the power of prayer and fasting can become so enormous in our church. I believe it has happened. I said it has happened. Today we're going to have planning. We're going to have planning for the states. We're going to have planning for the nations. And each national of ourselves will meet with his people. Each state of ourselves will meet with his people. And I think this is part of what can make the church the powerhouse of the Lord. That all the little, little things that divide us, all the little, I didn't see you, didn't see me, all that, that divides us, we get that out of the way. Because this year God has promised this church something great. You'll be part of it in Jesus' name. I will be part of it in Jesus' name. A pastor that led the prayer before the before he came on, he said, "Let's pray for our GS that uh, you know that he will have long life." And well, I accept that prayer, but I also transfer it to you. We're going to live long together in Jesus' name because there's a revival coming. There's a mighty torrent of revival coming. I don't want to die before I see that revival. And I want you, you are part of the people contributing to the progress of this church, the encouragement of leadership. And I, I wonder, every time you pray for me, I see these people, they're so loving, and they want me to live and live and live, even beyond the time I want to live. I was thinking I was only live up to 100 years, but the way some of you are praying, it's like I should go to 120. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. And I'm praying that all the prayers you are praying for me, God will multiply it and put it upon your life. The same long life you are asking for me, and the same success you are asking for me, and the same, you know, let him have greater ministry and greater impact and greater effectiveness. I pray, and I'm going to really wait on the Lord upon your behalf, that everything you are telling the Lord to do for me, he will multiply, he'll do it for you in Jesus' name. So, if we organize ourselves and we say we can get this by prayer and fasting, because the Lord can do something in this church. 
that this church, anywhere this church is, they will recognize us in Jesus' name. And it is by prayer and fasting. And we're not going to allow a little problem here, a little disagreement there, a little, I didn't see the way the pastor is saying, I didn't see the way my sister there is talking, all that. They're so small, they're so small. We're not going to allow those small things to hinder the great power and moving of God in our midst in Jesus' name. I come to point number three now, surpassing possibilities, surpassing possibilities through sanctified fasting and prayers. Surpassing possibilities through fasting and prayers. We're looking at Joel. In Joel chapter 1. Joel chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 14. Joel chapter 1 verse 14. Sanctify ye a past. Call a solemn assembly and gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. You see that he said, Sanctify a fast, set apart a fast. Even if it's one day, set it apart. Even if it's two days, set it apart. Even if it's three days, set it apart. Or if we're going to set it apart one day for that congregation, one day for that congregation, one day for that congregation, he says, Set apart a fast and sanctify. It was, and it says, if my people will do that, mighty things will happen. Look at Second Chronicles chapter twenty. Second Chronicles chapter twenty. I'm reading there from verse one. Second Chronicles chapter twenty. Second Chronicles chapter twenty. We're looking at it from verse one. It says it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and the, and then the other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There comes a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side of Syria, and behold, the being as a Tamar, which is Engedi. And then it says, And Jehoshaphat feared, and then Jehoshaphat set himself to seek the Lord, and proclaimed what? He proclaimed what? He proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. He proclaimed a fast, not just the local assembly, but throughout all Judah. That's what I'm saying, that all our congregation, throughout the church, we can proclaim a fast. And then in verse, in verse 4, Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord, even out of all the cities of Judah, out of all the cities of Judah. Every one of them participated in the, in the fasting like this. And then he says, and they came to seek the Lord. What if we'll do that as a church? That there's nobody left behind, there's no congregation left behind. We have the same goal, we have the same mind, we have the same request, we have the same prayer, we are praying, we have the same appointed days of fasting. And we say we're going to come together. Like Judah came together and he really fasted. And Jehoshaphat in verse 5 stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem and in the house of the Lord before the new court. And then he says and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art thou not? Not God in heaven and rule and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen. No matter where the problems are coming from, a God is the governor. A God is the ruler. A God is the king. And he's going to overcome for us in Jesus' name. And in thine hand, is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? Are thou not our God who do this drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gave us it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever? And he dwelt therein and have built thee a sanctuary and the therein for thy name for thy name saying if when evil cometh upon us as the sword the judgment or pestilence or famine will stand before this house and in thy presence for thy name is in this house thy name the name of god is in this house and cry unto thee in our affliction then thou wilt hear and hell it will hear us it will help us no matter what we're going through. Any story you hear, this happened yesterday, that happened last week, that happened another time to any deeper life church and to any, any kind of, any family in deeper life, any individual in deeper life, all they have their past. They have happened, they have happened, they have happened. There's nothing you can do about what has happened already. But then, God is going to reverse everything in Jesus' name. So, the key is in your hand. 
The key is in my hand. The key is in our hand together that will say no more. This will not happen to any of our pastors anymore in Jesus' name. We we'll say enough is enough. This will not happen to any local church or people alive anymore. And it will be so in Jesus' name. You know, all these people conspired together and they came against Judah and against Jehoshaphat. And then he set all the people together. He said, we're going to seek the face of the Lord. And they responded, just like you are responding. I said, just like you are responding. And we said, we're going to wait upon the Lord. We said, yes, we're going to do it. Because Ju uh, Judah, they all agreed together with Jehoshaphat. And then as they prayed and prayed and prayed, see there, and said, look at verse 17. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves and stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed tomorrow. Go out against them, for the Lord will, will be with you. I said, the Lord will be with you. Tomorrow, you are going back home. When you go back home, you go like a mighty army. Go like champions for the Lord. You go like giants in the land. And nothing will be able to stop your forward movement in Jesus' name. In verse 18, it says, in verse 18, and Joshua bowed his head and with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, and they worshipped the Lord, and the Levites of the children of the of the Kohites, and of the children of the Kohites were told that they stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning, because that's what the prophet had told them that tomorrow you go. The Lord will fight with you for you and he will be with you. And they went forth into the wilderness of Tekoam. And all and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah. These are people who are fasting. Hear me, O Judah. As we are fasting, we must hear the word of God. We cannot just say, Well, it's just for prayer and fasting. There's no hearing of the word of God. There's no examining of the prophecy God has for us and of the promises God has given us while we are fasting, while we are praying. We're looking at the word of God. We're hearing. We're looking at the promises of God. We're looking at the prophecy that have gone on on our behalf. It says, Hear, O, o Judah. Hear, O Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God and so shall ye be established. We are going to be established. That local church God has placed you will be established in Jesus' name. Your new family that you have just got, that you just got married and you are wondering because uh, we don't know the saying that when we just get married like that, it takes time for us to understand each other, a compatibility and this and that. You don't know whether this will happen. Just believe the word of God. Your family will be established in Jesus' name. And you just got some new business and this and that. And am I going to progress in this? Is it going to be established? Because, you know, I did this before it collapsed. I did that before it collapsed. This one will not collapse. Because you believe in the Lord your God, you'll be established. Believe this prophet, so shall ye prosper. I put that prosperity on you in Jesus' name. And when they had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army. And then it says, and so and, and so say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. That's all they were saying. They, they didn't even have any other stanza. They didn't have any other rhythm. Just praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. They were marching on. There was no gun in the hand. Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. There was no arrow to shoot. Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. And there was no soldier that is saying, now that's the target, but praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. As you go, you are praising the Lord. I said you are praising the Lord. His mercy will endure forever in your family. His mercy will endure forever in your life. His mercy will endure forever in your, in your ministry. His mercy will endure forever. Just say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Why don't you say that? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For His mercy endure it forever. In my life, His mercy endure it forever. In my family, His mercy endure it forever. In our local church, His mercy endure it forever. At the headquarters, His mercy endure it forever. And as we wait upon them, they were still fasting, they were still fasting. And as we were fasting and praying, His mercy endure it forever. And then look at this in verse 22. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, the Lord said, Ambushment against the children of Amnon and Moab. And, and then, and it says, Amnon, which one? 
come against Judah. Everything that has come against your life, against your family, against your church, against your ministry, the Lord will set and push me against them in Jesus' name. And they was meeting. And they was meeting. Everybody say, and they was meeting. Your enemies, and they was meeting. The people that opposed you, and they was meeting. I don't mean your brother, I don't mean your sister, you know. Uh -huh. My enemy, you know, it's not your enemy. Uh, you know, we're serving food. Give me my food now. No, it's not, uh, it's not your turn. I'm going to give to the, uh -huh. that's one of them. It's not all, oh, it's, your, it's your family member. I said to your family member, when we think of those who oppose us, there's nobody here that is opposing us. We're all in the same family. I say we're in the same family. Our prayer is not against anybody here. Our prayer is against Satan. Our prayer is against all those demons. And all those people that are indwelled by the demonic spirit. And they say that they want to stop the move of God in your life. They are outside there. They are not here. They are the people God is going to stop from affecting your life in Jesus' name. But as we're all here, anybody you see here, participant here, we all came for the Congress. We love the Lord. We love the work of God. We love you. We appreciate you. We appreciate the fact that you are here. We're not, we're not against you. Therefore, you're not praying against another brother or another sister because here we're the family of God. The family of God, there's no hatred. There's no opposition. It's the people who are outside. The Lord will smite the enemies of the gospel in Jesus' name. And then it says in verse 23, for the children of Ammon and the children of more. They stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir. They came to help one another, but they killed one another. And it says utterly to slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the, of the, of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, it looked unto the multitude, and behold, there were dead bodies falling to the earth, and none escaped. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them. That is the butchers of the, of, the, of, the, of the kind of battle. It says they found among them in abundance both riches uh, with, the dead, with the dead bodies and precious jewels which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. Riches more than they could carry. Me, riches more than you can carry. Abundance more than you can carry. This year is going to be a year. It's going to be something when all your enemies are defeated and then you are marching on with riches and with all the possibilities, all the potentialities of the power of prayer and passing your life. You'll see, I'll never see a year like this before. And they say, it said they were three days in gathering of the spoil because it was so much. It was so much. I said it was so much. I said it will be so much. Blessings have come. Authority has come. Anointing has come. Power has come. All limitation is taken away from your life from today in Jesus' name. Let's come back. Let's come back to Matthew chapter 17. Remember now, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. When last did you fast? Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. When next are you going to fast? Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Remember the disciples came to the Lord Jesus Christ and they asked him in verse 19. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and, uh, and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith, and thank God we have faith now. As a grain of mustard seed, he shall say unto this mountain, what's that mountain confronting your life? Confronting your family, confronting the local church, confronting the ministry. He says, shall say unto this mountain, remove hands to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing, and nothing, and nothing, and nothing, and nothing, before I complete that uh, sentence, I, I want you to just think about it now. What if you knew that any dream you have, nothing will be impossible? What if you knew any vision you have, any goal you set? What if you knew that anything you want to accomplish under this wide heaven? What if you knew that anything you decide, anything you want for your personal life, any height you want to reach, any destiny, destination you want to get to, what if you knew that nothing shall be possible to you, what goal will you search? 
What height will you try to reach? What thing will you attend that I'm going to do this because I know nothing shall be impossible unto me? The day of a no man's limit, no preacher's limit, no pastor's limit, no ministerial limit, that day has come for you. That all the limitation now is taken away because it says nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be each this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting, I'm going to obey the word of God. I said I'm going to obey the word of God until nothing shall be impossible unto me. And then we're going to obey until nothing shall be impossible for this church. Are we ready? Why don't you rise up? And you tell the Lord, we have had your word. We'll see. The sign is there. It's coming. We'll see the little hand like a cloud. And we know it's going to come. Pour upon us. It's a time for decision. It's a time to tell the Lord, Oh Lord, I've heard your word. I'm going to be a doer of the word. I'm going to be, I'm going to be a doer of the word. I'll not fast to the point I'll hurt myself. I'll not fast to the point I'll destroy my health. I'm not uh, fast to the point I'll become so weak, I cannot do, I cannot continue the ministry, but I will fast. But I will fast. You are telling the Lord, you are going to do it. You can start in a little way. You can start in moderation. And then the power of God will be unleashed in your life. And through your life, and you are going to do wonders to you. You are for signs and wonders in this land, in this territory, in this nation, in this continent, and in the continent you come from. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Whatever has happened in the past, that's past, that's gone, that's gone, that's gone. We're talking about a new day, a new week, a new month, a new year. There's something waiting for you, something waiting for us. Tell the Lord. It demands a decision, a decision that you are telling the Lord, Oh Lord of heard, I want to get to that point when nothing shall be impossible to me. But you are going to push aside irrelevant things, non-essentials, the things that hinder prayer, the things that hinder power. And those are non-essential things, irrelevant things, they matured. No less remain in baby stage anymore, where something little, something insignificant, non-essential will bother us anymore. Throw them aside and say, to become a no-limit pastor, to become a no-limit woman, no-limit man, no-limit person, I'm going to be, I am going to be, I am going to be, I am going to be, but remember this can go not forth, but by prayer and fasting, nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. The Lord has promised. The Lord is going to fulfill. He has promised. He has promised. He has promised. He is going to fulfill. It's not a message to just enjoy. It's a message to work on. It's a message to do something about. So I may say to decide, yes I will. When the bridegroom is gone back to heaven, then will they fast in those days. Do something about it. Do something about it. Do something about it. Have a goal, have a desire, have a dream. And you know, you can get to the point that nothing will be impossible unto you. Make up your mind, decide. After that decision, determine to carry through. And whatever it is in your life that will make your fasting superficial and shallow. That will make your fasting and prayer ineffective. Like turning your ears away from the word of God. A fasting for the flesh, fleshly pleasure, animosity, antagonism, strife, talk, 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 chill bearing, 
indulgence, idolatry, negligence, gossip, godlessness, whatever will hinder the effectiveness of prayer and fasting. Let your request be so important to you, so essential to you, that will get rid of all those things that will hinder either your prayer, either your fasting, that will hinder your effectiveness, that will hinder the power of fasting and praying in your life. You can become a no-limit person, a no-limit pastor, a no-limit preacher, a no-limit parent, a no-limit pioneer, you can. But this kind goes not out of our prayer and fasting.